Okay, so in the last class we looked at a couple of different adder configurations and we came up to the structure of the carry bypass uh, adder, right? And what we saw there was the carry bypass adder has this kind of a structure. Well, uh, yeah, so essentially what happens over here is we construct two routes as far as the carry propagate signal is concerned. Right? So there are two possibilities. We know that the critical path as far as the overall adder is concerned is when the carry has to ripple through in this case all 15 stages. Right? For a 16 bit adder, the worst case critical path corresponds to a situation where the carry has to ripple through all the 15 stages. All the 16 stages. Okay? So what we do is we say okay, that particular path will make sure it can never be the critical path. How do we do that? We provide a carry bypass path, right? Which says that if the propagate signal for each block are such that the carry should have got propagated all the way from the input to the output of that block, then we will straight away provide a multiplexer and allow it to bypass the carry all the way from the input of the block to the output of the block. Okay? So over here, this is the PG diagram, the propagate generate diagram. These portions compute the propagate signal for each block, right? And as and when the propagate signals over there are ready, they can basically say, okay, whether or not the carry which came in from the first stage needs to get bypassed through all those stages or not, okay? At any point, if there is a carry which needs to skip ahead through one block, what we are saying is without having the full latency of going rippling through that block, we will allow it to bypass all the way through. Okay. We also saw another configuration of the same adder where we said we'll have one, two, three, three, two. So increasing followed by decreasing kind of a arrangement of the individual block. The reason for that is we want to make sure that these gaps right, are reduced to the extent possible. So when we go here, we find that we have sort of managed to do that slightly, at least to some extent has been reduced. On this, on the upper portion, the each time that there is a multiplexer that essentially adds one more level, so in the next level you have one additional block, one additional element in the block. Okay? But after you have reached a certain point, you then need to start decreasing from there. So this is the carry bypass adder. Okay? The next form of adder that we are going to look at is what is called the carry look ahead adder. This uses the same concept once again, all, pretty much all the adders that we are going to see from now onwards are based around the concept of the propagate and generate signal. Okay? So what this one does is to say that it employs a concept called look ahead which is a much more general concept. It is not just something which is applied in the context of adders alone. It can be applied in many types of architecture design. Okay? Whenever you have an equation of this form, I am just giving an example, it need not be of this particular form, it need not be addition and multiplication. What we can do over here is substitute for y of n minus 1 over here and we will get right, which means that I have managed to write y of n in terms of y of n minus 2. I can extend this further and go to y of n minus 3. Right? 
you can keep on extending this as much as you want. In other words, as far as this equation is concerned, I have given you a way of directly computing y of n when you are only given y of n minus 3. Okay, you don't need to first calculate y of n minus 2, then y of n minus 1 and then calculate y of n. Given y of n minus 3, you can straight away calculate y of n. Okay. The same principle is used in the context of the propagate generate signals as well. What we have is to start with at the first level V1 or rather V0 is A0 B0 C0 is A0 XOR B0 we know that same way in, in general GI okay. so all the PIs and GIs can be calculated ahead of hand uh, ahead of the rest of the computation, right? Followed by we use what is the equation for generating at phase one? Either it was or uh, yeah. So this essentially means the one colon zero, right? So one colon zero. What does it say? that out of the block 1 colon 0, what are the probabilities that the carry was generated? This says that either it was generated at stage 1 or it was generated at stage 0 and propagated through stage 1. Right? And we saw earlier that in general for a block i colon j, this essentially can be broken up as either it was generated in the block i colon k or it was generated in the block k minus 1 colon j but then propagated through i colon k. Right? Those are the two conditions under which the block i to j will generate a carry output. Okay? So effectively what we are saying over here is we can pre-compute, we use the same look ahead concept and go ahead and pre-compute, right, what is the probability, uh, not probability, what is the condition under which a carry out is going to be generated at a particular state, right. So carry at stage 1 is either generated at stage 1 or generated at stage 0 propagated through 1. Carry at stage 2 is either generated at stage 2 or generated at 1 and propagated through 2 or generated at 0 propagated through 1 and 2. Carry at 3 is either generated at 3 or generated at 2 propagated through 3 or generated at 1 propagated to 2 and 3 or generated as 0 propagated through 1, 2 and 3. Okay. So in this way I have got one equation which directly gives me C3 in terms of G0, G1, G2, G3, T0, P1, T2, P3 which in turn are computed in terms of A0, A1 a to A3, B0, B1, B2, B3. Right? So I have straight away managed to write C3 in terms of the A three colon 0 and B three colon 0. Okay? I do not have a dependency on C2. Okay? So if I can somehow straight away skip through and go like this, it means that if I was able to figure out some clever way of implementing this entire logic at one shot, Right? Of course, if you now go ahead and try to implement this logic using multiple J, then you will probably end up with something which is a very massive J, very difficult to implement. 
Okay. But there are clever ways of implementing this kind of logic, which essentially says that we don't need to implement all of this G3 plus G2 P3 plus G1 P2 P3 plus G0 P1 P2 P3 using CMOS gate. Okay. There are some much more compact implementations using pass transistors and so on, which can be used for. Now, if we use that kind of structure, what we have is essentially something like this, right? The generate propagate signals are then over here. They combine with the C in at this stage directly to generate C4. This goes through to the next stage. Okay? How is this different from a carry bypass adder? We are not bypassing anything over here. There is no multiplexer. There is no two choices of carry input that are possible. We are straight away ca calculating C4 by using some fairly extensive computation over here. So the problem that happens is this G41, C41, it requires so many inputs, right? It requires all of these things to be input to it at the same time, right? So it cannot be done using a single or rather a two input kind of a cell which is what we have been using all this while. So the PG diagram for this looks slightly different. These black and grey circles that you see over here are essentially to indicate that the circle takes more than one input. Right? It takes four inputs in this case, directly generates the output. Whereas every time you look at the black or grey squares, you will notice that they take precisely two inputs. Right? The G i colon k and C i colon k and G i colon uh, G k minus 1 colon j and C a k minus 1 colon j. Those are the only inputs that are provided to them. Okay? These kind of cells, the blocks that take multiple inputs, are called multivalent cells. Okay? Essentially, they take multiple inputs and provide the outputs that you need. The problem obviously is that implementing such multivalent cells is going to be harder in general. Right? Making them in terms of the, or rather, if you directly try implementing it in terms of CMOS, it's going to be extremely complicated. So, you need some cleverer ways of implementing it. Once again, what's the critical part of this? If we look at it, essentially it depends on the number of stages that we have. So we have one stage out here. We have another stage uh, corresponding to this, this and this. Okay? So essentially what we are saying is once the initial carry has been generated for the first stage, because we are doing it in blocks like this, there will still be some kind of a ripple carry effect. Right? It means that the critical path will still end up going through something like this. Okay? Fairly long path that it has to go through, but much shorter than what the ripple carry would need to do. Okay? So, is there a limit on how far you can do carry look ahead? Why did we do only 4 stages? Is there a limitation? Can I straight away do 16 stages carry look ahead? In principle, yes. Right? Provided that I can figure out the way to implement the circuit for doing the carry look ahead computation without making that computation itself more complicated than a simple adder. Okay? The problem is that the carry look ahead computation at some point starts to become so complex that it competes with the complexity of a simple adder. Okay? So that should not happen. That is the main thing that we are looking for as far as the carry look ahead is concerned, which is why we break it up into blocks instead of trying to do it at one shot straight away. Alright. The next kind of adder that we look at is something called a carry select adder. This is also something somewhat similar to 
a carry bypass adder but once again illustrates the concept that is more general something that can be implemented in many kinds of vlsi design okay the core idea over here is this i need to compute something complex okay and my critical part is that that there is one particular input on which the entire output depends okay and that input essentially becomes my critical input something that determines my critical part and therefore determines the speed at which the entire system can operate okay what can i do about it? forget about adders this can be used for any kind of vlsi computation in fact for any kind of computation it's very often used even in parallel computing and other kinds of situations where you have the ability to compute multiple things at the same time but you are limited by the fact that you are dependent on one particular input one or some small subset of input okay so what do you do over here you essentially say i have many inputs to the system okay there is one critical input so what do i do with this i'll make two copies of the system because i know that that critical input can only take two possible values 0 or 1 okay i'll make two copies of the system put the entire output not just the carry remember this is the main difference between the carry bypass adder and the carry select adder in the case of carry select everything the entire computation is essentially being done in parallel there are two copies of the computation being done okay this essentially means that i can apply the critical input over here and select the output okay in general this is a tricky thing to do because what happens is the amount of hardware that you need is doubled okay still it is very often used in certain kinds of design when you specifically need to go for speed right speed is your only concern you somehow want to take that critical input out of the critical part you have the ability to do all your other computations quickly so what do you do you essentially let this go through you pre compute both the possible choices and just do a selection at the end okay a similar kind of thing can be used even in parallel computing let's say that i have four processors and i want to compute something which depends on some particular input i don't know the value of that input okay it takes time to compute that value what do i do i basically calculate for all possible values of the input what the output should be keep them ready over there and just do a selection at the final step okay this can be applied for many general kinds of computation not just for the addition now the point is in general this would have been a bad idea for an adder because you have effectively doubled the hardware okay but in the case of the adder at least both of these adders right can share a lot of logic in particular the propagate generate logic can be shared between both of them okay so even though it looks as though i need to double the amount of hardware that's not really true i don't need to double it one set of propagate generate computations can be used but i can essentially then combine that with the adders in this with the carry input in different ways okay so the sense of being very similar to the carry bypass adder structurally at least but the core idea that is being used over here is different okay this is what the pg diagram for this looks like right the main concept over here is 
instead of having multiplexers to decide where the carry goes, what we say is, we'll do the complete addition using these black cells over here, right? For computing, 5 colon 4, 6 colon 4, 7 colon 4. It may not be clear over here what is... Yeah, what the black cells are computing is not just the individual propagate generate signal for that block. It is actually for everything from 5 to 4 itself. Okay, so what does that mean? What does it mean to say that the propagate, that, that block is cal calculating the G5 colon 4 and T5 colon 4? It means that as soon as T4 is available, the input, straight away, this output can also be computed in parallel with this. So, because G5 colon 4 has been pre-computed, as soon as I have C4, I can straight away calculate C5. Okay? G6 colon 4 has been pre-computed, so as soon as I have C4, I can calculate C6 and C7. Okay? So, all of these end up being calculated at one shot in parallel with each other. Okay? The same concept that we talked about earlier can be applied over here. What are we doing in this case? We are once again Once again, just like in the case of the carry bypass adder, we change the number of units in each block. Okay? So the first one has one, the second one has two, the third one has three, the fourth one has four and so on. Okay? Unlike in the case of the carry bypass adder, we don't need to go up to four and then go back down to one because we don't have that sort of reducing state that was there in the carry bypass adder, the lower part where you are once again need to ripple through the block. So here, as soon as the carry input is ready, all the other outputs for that block can be instantly computed. Okay? So the size of the block keeps on increasing all the way from right to left. Okay? Now, one other thing which will also come up later when in the study of the prefix adders, one problem exists with this kind of adder with this kind of structure, with this kind of VLSI design. Can you identify what the problem is? There might be multiple problems, but is there anything particular that strikes you over here? The different, well, something that's different from everything else that we had earlier. What is it? The part that I have marked in red. What does that indicate? Huh? Fan out. Okay? So now what happens is, because of the carry select kind of operation, where I essentially pre-computed all the outputs, and kept them ready, I need to take that carry input and fan it into all the computed blocks. Okay? So now these signals, this signal over here, this signal over here, they have high panels. What's the problem with high panels? Huh? Capacitance. 
which means delay. Right? So when a signal fans out to a large number of inputs, effectively the total load capacitance that it is seeing is the sum of the capacitances of each of those inputs. Okay? The larger that total value, the more problematic it becomes to drive that. There is a large value of CL, it has to drive that entire capacitance. So, the delay becomes larger. It might also have an impact on power, but power is not something that we can save over here. We have to drive this many inputs. Okay? But as far as delay is concerned, the high fan out signals can become a problem. They are no longer just one logic level of delay. Right? Their delay now becomes dependent on the amount of fan out. And depending on the size of the transistors that are used over there, it may actually become quite significant. Is there any way that you can think of to avoid this problem? Or to reduce the impact of this pan out problem? At least in some of the cases. Huh? Buffer. Right? So what does a buffer do? Essentially what a buffer does is, let's say that I have some kind of a signal which is trying to drive. Many different blocks. Now, the important point is this. Let's say that this was the only critical path. Right? Why is it the critical path? Because there is something further downstream over there, which actually makes it the critical path. Okay. What I am going to say is, I will convert this, I will keep this unchanged, but I will take this, put it through a buffer and then drive the other four from there. Okay. So all these paths delay has increased. But that's okay because it was not critical to start with. A slight increase in the delay on that path is acceptable. What will happen to the delay on this path? If anything, it might slightly decrease. It will not increase. It might slightly decrease. Why will it decrease? Because of the load capacitance here. So what has happened in this case is, I have managed to decrease the overall delay slightly by putting a buffer on the non-critical path. Okay? How do I apply that concept over here? What are the non-critical paths that you have? Rather, which is the critical path over here? So, the critical path essentially goes something like this, right? Through this, then this, then through this. It doesn't really touch the other. Then through this. And then through this. Okay? So in other words, all these other things over here. The portions highlighted in green are not on the critical path. Well, sorry, not the last one. The portions highlighted in green are not on the critical path. Okay. So what can you do? You make use of that 
and make a structure that looks something like this. Okay. What have I done? Wherever I had a fan of greater than 2, I keep the critical path as it is, but I put a buffer on everything else. Okay. So you can see at the last stage I put a buffer before computing this. Same way I put buffers over here and I put buffers over here. Okay. So the individual load that is affecting each of those driving points has been ready. Okay. Once again, this is a concept that can be applied to any VLSI design. It's not specific to adder. Right? So the point of all the study of adders is partly to of course understand how adders can be constructed, but more importantly, it brings out many concepts that are applied across many areas in architectural design. What do I mean by architectural design? Where I am not talking about individual transistors, but I am talking about building blocks. How do I build the entire circuit out of larger, uh, larger than individual gate, but smaller than modules, large modules? Okay. In this case, I am constructing things out of full adder, or in this case, out of PG modules, like right, the propagate generate module. Okay. All right. Now. We are now going to move on to the last section of adder, which is a concept called parallel prefix computation. Okay. Once again, prefix computations are something which are used in general in very different areas, especially in parallel computing. Okay, not specifically in VLSI design. The idea is supposing I want to add eight numbers. Okay. Okay. But let's say that I don't just want to add. I just I don't want only sigma AI. I want a1, A1 plus A2, A1 plus A2 plus A3, A1 plus A2 plus A3 plus A4, up to A1 plus A2 all the way up to A. I want all of those outputs. Okay. I'm going to just do something to simplify over here. I'll make this A8, A7, A6, up to A1. Right. The reason for this is because the right to left convention is what we use in the context of adder, so it becomes slightly easier to visualize the diagram in that way. Okay. Now, what's the straightforward way of doing this? Ripple carry, right? I do A1 plus A2, I take that and add it to A3, then add it to A4, add it to A5, add it to A6, A7, A8. I get all the partial sums that I want. So I want all the path cells up. What I'm going to say is, if I did not ask you to calculate all the path cells up, what would have been the path cells rate by which you could have just added up and given me A1 to A8? If I just give you a bunch of adders and tell you, what's the fastest way to add all of these things together? How would you do it? Which one is faster? Is it this? Or is it which one is faster? The second one, right? So the red one is faster. Okay. 
they would like to do something similar but including all the partial sum so what we are going to do is calculate this okay now this value is taken away right so is this okay now what i need to do is i want to calculate the sum of a3 what do i do i take this and add it over here okay but i can also take the same thing and add it here to get a4 okay in the meantime hmm yeah i also calculate this okay or let me just eliminate this for clarity so i calculate both of these and then i calculate this okay so this is 4 colon 3 this is 4 colon 1 8 colon 1 8 colon 5 6 colon 5 8 colon 7 okay now what i can do is compute the rest of the thing by saying if i want five that's a combination of five and four colon one okay three is a combination of three and two colon one okay then come the seven is yeah so i need to calculate 6 colon 1 right so how do i get 6 colon 1 i calculate it from here that is right and i can then calculate 7 colon 1 okay so effectively what happens is i go through one stage where i reduce all the computation okay two at a time and then another phase where i then scan through the rest of it i calculate the remaining things that need to be computed uh, computed okay so the 5 colon 1 6 colon 1 time colon 1 can be computed in the second stage essentially what i will end up with is how many stages will be here in the first part if i have n total numbers to be added like this i will end up with log in to base two stages over here and in the downstream part also i will end up with log in to base two stages the ripple carry order would have required n stages over here i need two into log n stages to finish the computation okay yeah 
讲。I I think that's right. So sorry, that's a good point. Thanks for. Right. So what happens over here is. I need to get this diagram exactly right. I will bring that to you tomorrow and give it in the complete manner. But what you can do, as you pointed out, is sorry, I got the diagram. Six colon one can be calculated in parallel with five colon one, right? So what that means is the number of stages required for going to seven colon one is first calculate six colon one and then go to seven colon one. Eight colon one has already been computed. Okay. In this way, you can write down under what is the optimal number of steps required for computing each of the intermediate stages. The detailed diagram for doing this, I'll discuss it once again tomorrow in class. We'll stop here for now and continue with the remaining part of adders and then move on to multipliers tomorrow.